Hi everyone and welcome to the show. I'm Nancy Guppy with Joe Guppy. Hello. And we are coming to you from our home again, uh, specifically from the gaming table in our living room. Now, I'm not a big gamer. And in fact, when Joe suggests that we play a game, my first response is pretty much always uh, that she'd rather be dead. Yes, I'd rather be dead. But then I begrudgingly agree and it ends up being fun. Uh, so this is our Scrabble game, and of course a very popular game. We probably play this the most. And this particular board is uh, from Joe's childhood. How old is this thing? It's got to be 50 years old. Like 50 years old. Yeah. And there's some very special features with this board. Um, oh, for starters, so one of the wooden letter holders here, there's four in the game, uh, features um, some bite marks from Joe's youngest brother. Right there, my, my brother Mark. Yeah. Those are his teeth marks right, right there. Right there. And then there's this note that Joe's wonderful mother, Pauline, wrote, and it says, All pieces are here. Game is complete. November 25th, 2006. Finally, this double M, and Joe is pretty convinced that it's worth some money. What do you think? Yeah, so that's a, a misprint, makes it a valuable collector's item. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's probably got to be worth at least $100,000. Mm -hmm. And then if you throw in the entire set, I'd say $110,000. Right. So all we have to do is figure out how to do eBay and we're set. I mean, it's really basically it's a retirement plan, yeah, right? And, yeah. and a good one, I would yeah. say. All right, we have a really great lineup for you this week, including a conversation with the founder of the satirical website, The Needling, a preview of Chop Shop Bodies of Work Contemporary Dance Festival, and new music from Tekla Waterfield and Jeff Fielder. And we're going to begin with a visit to the sublimely quirky and quixotic world of artist and puppet show maker, Adam Endy. I'm Adam Ende, the founder and janitor of Jawbone Puppet Theater. Arguably, I was in training as a puppeteer like all my life without knowing it. As a kid, I was always drawing cartoons as, you know, I, I got into pottery. I was a potter for a while, although like a potter with the sensibility of an underground comic book artist. And puppetry kind of put it all together, the, the writing and the visual art and the, the storytelling. I kind of live in a compound um, with my my dad and my son and his mom, my my ex and her partner and their uh, four year old child. So I, I have a lot of people, you know, <laughs> around me and 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 kids that, that I spend a lot of time with. Hello. Yeah. We need another color. What color? Um, I guess purple. Purple. Yeah. So my work life, my puppet life, and my real life are, ha are incredibly interconnected and always have been. I mean, e even, you know, even my regular street clothes are like stupid puppet clown clothes all the time now. A lot of my work is based on literature and, and folk tales. I, you know, I do a really nice Kafka piece but also make stuff up. And a lot of stuff comes from my own life um, and, and, and sometimes combining those things. The show that I'm working on now, it's about a, uh, you know, an out of work, uh, underachieving puppeteer, you know, in, in a global pandemic who, you know, he's busy making pickles all the time. He's got, he's got no work. But he realizes he's got to get it together again and start doing shows. And, and so he, he gets together with his son, the boy inventor, who has an idea about how to bring the pickles and the theatrics together again. 
Now, don't worry. While you've been fooling around with your little pickles, I've been doing online research. I know what to do. We're gonna use the pickles and do the classic electric pickle experiment. OMG, kid, you're a genius. I, I don't have a lot of happy endings. The puppet shows mostly end horribly. You know, there, there's the Kafka piece called The Bucket Rider, where the, the main character is blown off into the regions of the ice mountains and is lost forever and presumably freezes to death. A lot of people who make work for children make a big mistake in not respecting the intelligence of children. I try to make work that's just interesting, and it's interesting for everyone, and it's interesting to kids because it's interesting. And they might not get all, like, everything that's going on in the Kafka piece, but nobody gets everything that's going on in the Kafka piece. When, when, when we activate the pickle, it can shoot us off into a, an alternate timeline, a, a, a parallel universe. Come on, set this thing for Charlotte Perkins Gilman, feminist utopian, her land universe. And ready. Great. <laughs> OMG, kid. That was amazing! Let's see if it worked. I'll turn on the TV and then we'll check the news. Good evening, and welcome back to Feminist Utopian News, our top story tonight. A deadly virus which might have caused a global pandemic affecting millions worldwide was deftly sidestepped by our beloved world leaders, the Council of Matriarchs who, with their cool-headed leadership and nurturing ways, managed to nip the virus in the bud and stamp it out before it even got started. No one hurt, no big deal. I feel like a sacred duty to entertain, whatever that means. And I think that works like for children and adults, and they can all be seeing the same piece and getting a lot out of it. This is amazing, Ling Ling. I told you feminist utopia would be awesome. Come on, let's watch more. And now, on the dystopian side of the news, a plague of murderous giant crows continues to harass the populace. Wait, what? We finally make it to feminist utopia and they have killer crows? I can't win. Ugh. If something strikes me as interesting and, and funny and challenging and I, I trust in that, I, you know, if it makes me laugh or makes me wonder, I, I, I trust that I'm doing something right. Okay, Adam, good. I think we got it. Thank you. Okay, great. Are you sure we got everything that we need? What? Oh, God, the giant crows! They're real! No! Oh! No! It hurts! For more information about Adam, including workshop bookings and commissions, and to see the full version of that time, the underachieving, out-of-work puppeteer was asked to do an interview about his craft in the middle of a pandemic. Go to adamendy.art. Another game in the Guppy House is Boggle, uh, which Joe loves to play because it gives him the opportunity to quote the Beastie Boys lyric to the song, putting shame in your game. I'm the king of Boggle. There is none higher. I get 11 points off the word Quagmire. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly why I always say no to playing Boggle. Hmm. Well, our Zoom conversation this week is with Lex Vaughn, editor and founder of the very funny locally based satirical website, The Needling. Good to see you, Miss Vaughn. Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. All right, first off, for our viewers who have not seen The Needling, um, it's an online satirical website that makes fun of pretty much everything. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, the tagline is, we're Seattle's only real fake news, but a lot of people kind of refer to us as a local onion, which, yeah, you know, yeah I mean, a lot of our uh, website is basically in that style, but we have a variety of kind of satirical articles, um, mostly rooted in local humor, but you know, some of our contributors and myself come up with great national headlines that we have to put in there too. Oh, yeah. oh absolutely. <laughs> there's, so, there's so many great headlines. I want to mention a couple of uh, great examples right off the top here. Uh, Fremont Troll, priced out of Fremont, moves to Tukwila. 
Mm -hmm. That is so perfect. It hits the whole thing about high rent, high priced houses in a really funny way. Yeah, that that is uh, one of our, our sweetheart headlines that really like kicked off the website. You would be shocked how many people believed it. Part of me goes, man, we need better you know, media literacy out there. And part of me goes, I don't know. World's been kind of crazy. I can't yeah. blame people. Another great one. Shocking report finds Cleellum actually nowhere near Enumclaw. Yeah. Love that. Love that. Who knew? Who knew? And I, I mean, I love that kind of headline, too, because it's one of those everyday things. Honestly, you know, there's probably people who read that and were like, really? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I do always make that mistake. Yeah, it, yeah. it resonates. <laughs> it, it totally resonates. I know another yeah. one, and I, I don't know if you can think of it off the top of your head or remember the title, but it's about um, the, the forest. Do you remember the, that yeah. one? Yeah, local woman just thinks flaming forests could find more peaceful way to protest climate change. I came up with that one in a really hard week. It was like one of those weeks where it didn't just feel like we were living through a dumpster fire. It it literally looked like we were living in a dumpster fire. <laughs> there was no escape from the bad news. You couldn't take a walk outside and not think about it for 10 minutes. Um, mm -hmm. So that that one kind of like got what everybody was feeling that week. You launched the needling uh, uh, 2018. Yeah, yeah. So where did you get the idea that you could do this? You were able to do this. Um, you know, the funny thing about my whole background is uh, when I first joined like my high school newspaper, I didn't like a lot of the for formulaic way that news is delivered. And I wanted to make fun of it. Um, and I, I thought I was going to sneak jokes into our high school newspaper. But then I actually caught the you know, real journalism bug and ended up becoming like a journalist like a pretty well accomplished journalist. I, I, I've been at the Seattle Times and the LA Times. Yeah, I've had my reporting on NPR. So I, I really went all the way with journalism, the real news. You were part of the Seattle Times team that won a little thing I like to call a Pulitzer Prize yeah. uh, for the yeah. Ellison Mudslide um, mm -hmm. series. So um, I just want everyone to know <laughs> That, yeah, not only are you good, you're like a Pulitzer Prize winning good. So, yeah, I, I spent about two weeks out there reporting on that. And honestly, it's like part of why I'm also into satire right now is, you know, sometimes difficult news is, you know, very, it's hard to process. You don't want to take your eyes off the difficult tragedies that are going on in our world. Um, but how can you take a look at that and keep your eye on it without constantly being emotionally drained by it? You know, constantly feeling like you're getting this gut punch. And I think comedy can help with that. Definitely. What makes a good headline and what makes a good story? Because it's not just the headline, you also write the story. Yeah. Uh, well, from the outset, we're not making fun of like people that are already experiencing a hard time in life. You know, if we're going to be making fun of people, it's going to be people in power, people who've got it coming because <laughs> of the way they've exploited people or their power. Um, so that's a major thing first. And then being concise is good. Um, that, that's a challenge, you know, to really like get the attention of people online. It needs to be like that. Concise. Yeah. Quarantine haircut qualifies as both self-care and self-harm. Fine. Yes. One of our, our main contributors came up with that one. And just that same week, I'd had two friends that had hacked their hair up. And I'm like, we need this PSA out there now. Yeah. Um, now, there's one that is I love, um, and it got a massive amount of attention. New study confirms cats can't spread COVID-19, but would if an option. Okay. Unbelievably funny. And it went viral. So tell me how that happened. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was like a big lesson. It's like uh, before that moment, it's like sometimes when you have a story that gets shared, you know, like 200 times on Facebook before that, you're like, wow, it kind of went viral. You're like, oh, that's a big deal. Um, this one went like the real, like international. <laughs> like, and it, it what sucked is like somebody kind of stole our content. They took like a screenshot of our, you know, our image and our headline and didn't give us credit. 
one cool thing that we we got out of that though was um jerry seinfeld's wife shared it without credit and then we asked for credit and then you know at least she was able to give us credit to a bunch of you know really cool comedians who, who liked it like ali wong and neil brennan and and you know her husband jerry seinfeld so that was like whoa and then for some reason like first lady laura bush started following us and i saw her like liking our post i'm like this is crazy <laughs> that is so great just, I, I just love yeah. that yeah i just love that well lex thanks so much for um for talking with me and more than anything thank you for upping the laugh quotient in the world certainly in my household we enjoy oh. the kneeling so much it's just great i keep keep on going strong it, it's you're thank awesome. you and it, it's such an honor to speak with somebody else who was a big part of the Seattle comedy scene and, you know, uh, you know, another form of satire, uh, almost live. It's an honor to speak with you too. Oh, great. Great. Well, it's fun <laughs> to talk comedy. I always like talking comedy. All right, girly, take care. Yeah. Lots of laughs await you at theneedling.com. Also the needling update, a brand new podcast is scheduled to launch on Friday, February 5th. Yahtzee is a classic game of dice where you try to roll different combinations like, you know, small straight, large straight, full house, and of course, the Yahtzee, which is five of a kind. Now, in our house, when you roll a Yahtzee, you have to run outside and yell Yahtzee at the top of your lungs, which Joe will now demonstrate. Yes! <gasps> wow! Yahtzee! The neighbors love us. Well, our musical guest this week is the powerhouse duo Tecla Waterfield and Jeff Fielder. They recently released their first official joint record. It's called Trouble in Time. And they're going to play two songs for us, starting with Better Days.
Trouble in Time is available as a download on Bandcamp or from your favorite digital platform. Hard copies are available through email, teclawaterfield at yahoo.com. And learn lots more about Tecla and Jeff on their websites. The newest addition to our game pile is Hive Pocket. Uh, this was a Christmas present from our beloved niece Dana and her wonderful husband Teddy. Now we've played Hive Pocket once and honestly it really makes absolutely no sense. I, actually I think I'm starting to get it, okay? The, okay. the grasshopper can like hop over, uh -huh. over stuff. Uh -huh. The ladybug moves two spaces on top of the hive and then and then down somewhere, mm -hmm. and the soldier ant can move as long as the restrictions on pages eight and nine are adhered to. Mm -hmm. Well, the upshot is this. We will be regifting Hive Pocket next Christmas, right? Yeah. Yeah. Merry Christmas, somebody. And now an update on the annual Chop Shop Bodies of Work Contemporary Dance Festival. Normally an in-person experience, this year's fest is all online and features seven world premiere dance films by leading local and national contemporary dance artists, master classes, artist Q&As, and special events. The festival is happening now and each film, once released, will be available to view through March 31st, 2021. More information, including how to get tickets, is at chopshopdance.org. We want to show you one more game. It's probably the strangest game in our collection. It's called the Spiro T. Agnew American History Challenge Game. So Joe, who was Spiro T. Agnew? Spiro T. Agnew was Richard M. Nixon's vice president. He resigned in disgrace in 1973 over allegations that he had accepted an envelope containing $10,000 in cash in a basement room in the White House. Now this game came out in 1971 when he was still riding high. Thank you. And that is a wrap. We're going to leave you with Tecla Waterfield and Jeff Fielder performing the title track off their new record, Trouble in Time. Enjoy and have a great week. All right, Nancy. Uh huh. Which was not an important export of colonial America? Was it A, fish, B, tobacco, or C, lumber? Or D, I wish I were dead. Oh, come on. The, the spinning is fun. Yeah, you're right. It is fun. I like the spinning part. Okay, what's that? That's industrialization, industrialization right. This should be fun. Okay. In the campaign for senator...
Trouble in